Welcome to From the Quarries. Tonight's video is part two of The Arithmetic of Freemasonry by F. P. de Castells from 1914. It turns out that there's so much in this lecture that I think it's going to be a three-parter now, so tonight's part refers specifically to the number 15. Part three will be a bit more wide-ranging and will refer to what Castells re refers to as the metrology of the craft. Good evening and welcome to tonight's presentation, From the Quarries, an archive of Masonic lore. After this rapid survey of the ritual, we shall now examine the Summum Numerorum, the number 15. I hope to throw some new light on the mystic significance of this number, but first of all, I beg leave to call your attention to its internal harmonies. It has been said that there is divinity in odd numbers, and the number 15 is remarkable in many ways. It combines the first two of our symbolic numbers, for 3 times 5 equals 15. And strangely enough, the two numbers, 3 and 5 joined together, represent 35, which equals 5 times 7. The other two symbolic numbers. Moreover, if we multiply the three numbers, 3 times 5 times 7, the result is 105, the lowest common multiple, which also equals 7 times 15, and is practically the same number, 15, with the naught inserted between the figures. Chronologically, a period of 15 days is that which is enclosed within three Sabbaths. Many of the ancient nations held their great festivals on the 15th day of a month, and they usually followed the lunar year the moon must have been full at that time. In Greece, the ceremonies of initiation into the Eleusinian Mysteries, both in the autumn and in the spring, began on the 15th day of the month and lasted nine days. Note that these nine days equal three times three. In music, the number 15 represents two complete scales, that is, the notes comprised between three C's. As five stands for one hand, fifteen equals three hands, and there is somewhere a chapter which has for its distinctive badge a triangle within which we see two hands stretched out from the sides and grasping each other, while a third hand descending from the apex holds up both of them. Although the interpretation of this symbol belongs to the royal arch, we may all read a beautiful thought into it, that of fraternal union on earth maintained under the protection of the Most High. In the trinal system of primitive man, the numbers 6 and 9, which are the first trine doubled and trebled, were considered round numbers, and adding them together, we get 6 plus 9 equals 15. Then, too, the number 15 combines the two leading terms of the decimal system, 10 plus 5, which reminds us of the fact that the decimal system, now acknowledged to be the most perfect system of arithmetic, is but the early method of counting by fives, that is to say, by the fingers of the hand. There really is nothing new under the sun. But suppose we take the first five digits as representing a progressive arithmetical series, and that we add them up. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Again, the total will be 15. And if we add up all the nine digits in the same way, then we bring the total to 45, which equals 3 times 15, and is half the number of the square. 45 plus 45 equals 90. This I've illustrated by a diagram thus. 
which has a pile of bricks arranged in that same progressive order. Look for a moment at this magic square. In it, the nine digits are arranged in three rows, three times three, and however the figures may be added up, vertically, horizontally, or diagonally, the sum of every three is always the same, 15. The key to the various operations possible is to be found in the symbols from which we obtain the Masonic alphabet. No other arrangement of the numbers will ever yield such harmony. Please observe that the central column consists of the symbolic 3, 5, 7, the first at the bottom, 5 in the centre, 7 above. 5 stands between 1 and 9, the unit which is the root of all number, and 9 the highest digit. These two together complete the decade. My object in calling your attention to these facts is to show you that the use of the number 15 in our Masonic symbolism is not arbitrary. It is the best the ancients could have chosen to convey the idea of fullness or completeness. Let us see, therefore, how it is that the number comes into the ritual. I have said before, that we open and close the lodge with three knocks. But it would be equally correct to say that we open and close the lodge with 15 knocks, because the knocks prescribed by the ritual are struck successively by the Worshipful Master, the Senior and Junior Wardens, and by both the Inner and Outer Guards. Five officers in all, and five times three make 15. Then, we know how the candidate advances to the place of light by stages, which are measured by a fixed number of steps. The entered apprentice takes three, the fellow craft five, the master mason seven. Add up all these and you have 15 as the total. This advancing order in the steps of each degree is foreshadowed by the entered apprentice at his initiation, for in his case, the steps are of varying length. The second, is of a little longer than the first, and the third a little longer than the second, as expressed by the numerical proportion of 3, 5, 7. In the explanation of the second tracing board, we read that our ancient brethren passed up the winding staircase consisting of 3, 5, 7 or more steps, and these correspond with the steps taken by our candidates. And it should be observed that the phrase, or more steps, does not imply any uncertainty as to the height of the staircase. It is merely a necessary reservation, the margin allowed for the requirements of the higher degrees. In the traditional history of the third degree, we hear a conspiracy organized by 15 fellow crafts. They were of that superior class appointed to preside over the rest which means the order now denominated Master Masons. Out of the 15, 12 recanted, but three proved to be of a determined and atrocious character and were responsible for a great tragedy. As against these rebellious fellow crafts, there are mentioned another 15 who went to search for our master, Hiram Abiff. And we read that when these 15 trusty fellow crafts were commissioned by King Solomon for their work, they divided themselves into three companies, which means, of course, three fellow craft lodges of five members each. One company sought and found not. One company made the discovery, and the third company brought the evildoers to judgment. What then are we to think of the 30 fellow crafts? In my opinion, they are emblematic of the struggle which is ever going on in the world between antagonistic forces with which every human being is more or less acquainted. The evil being ever envious of the good, the ambitious seeking to achieve success by deceit and rapacity, and extreme cases by the most heinous crimes. The selfish and greedy, thwarting and defeating the very ideals they profess to admire. All this in the hope of obtaining wealth, position or power. 
and Freemasonry steps in and counsels to substitute virtue, industry and perseverance for dishonesty, covetousness and violence, and to aim at the happiness of the fraternity. We may see the counterpart of this in the two intersected triangles shown on the second degree tracing board. One of the triangles is black and the other white, and the two are united by the letter G, inscribed in the common centre. I believe that the tragedy in the forefront of the volume of the sacred law, Cain slaying his brother Abel, was intended to illustrate the same conception of life which is inculcated by Freemasonry. And the Chinese have from time immemorial represented this struggle which is ever going on by the symbol they call Yin Yang. In the tracing board of the Master Mason, there is another memorial of the death of our Master. It takes the form of three fives arranged triangularly, thus. They suggest an equilateral triangle, each five representing one side. But we know that historically they correspond to the three methods tried for the purpose of bringing back to life the ideal man. The three fives, therefore, are the three hands, with fifteen fingers in all. There has been confusion over this, and some rituals have been put forth that give the fellow crafts of the traditional history as twelve in number, instead of fifteen. It seems to have arisen from certain distinctions being overlooked or forgotten. Let us remember that while the tradition mentions two companies of fifteen fellow crafts in each case, they are divided into twelve plus three, because one three of the rebellious fellow crafts are held responsible for the murder of our master. Three hands struck the fatal blows, and three hands were exerted in raising the dead body. On this account, both death and life may be expressed by three fives or three hands. In closing the fellow craft lodge, the wardens report the discovery of a sacred symbol, said to be situated in the centre of the building, and this may be explained by what we read elsewhere. When our ancient brethren were in the middle chamber of the temple, their attention was peculiarly drawn to certain Hebrew characters, which are here depicted by a letter G, denoting God, the grand geometrician of the universe, to whom we must all submit, and whom we ought humbly to adore. According to this, the cryptic G is but our modern substitute for the Hebrew characters depicted in the same tracing board just over the door at the top of the staircase. These characters are now commonly read as Jehovah, but the name was always considered too sacred to be pronounced by human lips, and the Jews themselves, in order not to write it, have frequently expressed it only with the initial Yod. In speaking of this, however, it is necessary to bear in mind that the characters of the Hebrew alphabet were numbers as well as letters. That is, they could be made to stand alternatively for a quantity or a sound. Here are the first ten of them with their corresponding numerical value. We see then that the letter Yod, the initial of the name Jehovah, when used numerically, represented the number 10, a fact which has afforded ground for much speculation. As previously shown, the Yod, standing for 10, may be regarded as emblematic of the perfect system of arithmetic. Some Jewish rabbis, known as the Kabbalists, pointed out that the divine name in Hebrew consists of four letters, hence called the Tetragrammaton, or four-lettered name and by taking one, two, three, four as a series, they reached the total of ten, which agreed with the face value of the initial. In this, the Kabbalists came in touch with Pythagoras and his holy Quaternion, or in Greek, Tetractus, for Pythagoras held that four, the first square number, was the potential decade, and it stood for the cosmic elements fire, air, earth and water. Sometimes, the four Hebrew letters were arranged thus. When combined, 
the numerical value of the 10 characters gave a total of 72, which the Jews regard as an important symbolic number. And sometimes, in seeking to abbreviate the incommunicable name of God, they doubled or trebled the initial Yod, thus. In each of these cases, the result is a distinct triangle, but you may see that while the first is pointing down, the second is pointing up. And numerically, while the two Yods equal 20, the three equal 30. There is one more way of abbreviating the ineffable name, one which did not originate with the Kabbalists, but is found in actual use in the Psalms, and may therefore be regarded as authorised by the volume of the sacred law. I mean that which consists in writing the first two letters of the name. Read phonetically, they spell Yah or Jah, but arithmetically they should represent the number 15, that is, 10 plus 5. The Jews used to express the numbers from 10 to 20 by writing 10 plus 1, 10 plus 2, 10 plus 3, 10 plus 4, etc. But when they came to 15, they found that the two characters required were associated with the ineffable name of God, and so they varied the order, writing instead of 10 plus 5, 9 plus 6. We have seen that in our Masonic symbolism, the number 15 has been made to embody the idea of fullness or totality. And now, if we look again into the ritual, we may find a further illustration of this idea. For in the explanation of the second tracing board, the Worshipful Master refers to the practical significance of the symbolic numbers 3, 5, 7, and reminds us that a lodge is ruled by 3, held or organised by 5, and made perfect by seven. In this way, those symbolic numbers suggest three leading ideas. Government, organisation and perfect development. And as the number 15 is reached by combining the three numbers 3 plus 5 plus 7 equals 15, we may regard this sum as comprehending all those ideas and as being a fitting emblem of the grand ideal of Freemasonry. In the ancient Scottish Rite, the members of the 10th degree are called illustrious knights of 15, as having attained to the fullness of this ideal. For more Masonic podcasts, videos, music, texts and artwork, visit fromthequarries.com or subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter and Facebook accounts by searching From the Quarries. Thank <laughs> you.